this hearing is called A Legacy of Incompetence, Consequences of the Biden-Harris Administration's Policy Failures. Policies that do not deliver results for the American people, who are the taxpayers, uh, are complete failures. Spending money and allocating money is not a policy of success. It's the outcome of the money that has been spent based on the policy. So I'd like to talk through this one that I find absolutely shocking, especially given that my district is a rural district in Georgia. This is in uh, 2021. President Biden taps Kamala Harris to lead effort to close digital divide. The White House released their remarks by President Biden an address to a joint session of Congress. And in the process, it will create thousands and thousands of good paying jobs. It creates jobs connecting every American with high speed internet, including 35% of the rural America that still doesn't have it. This is going to help our kids and our businesses succeed in the 21st century economy. And I'm asking the vice president to lead this effort, if she would. Vice President replied, of course. The President said, because I know it will get done. Now, fast forward to 2024. Here's the headlines. Why has Joe Biden's 42 billion broadband program not connected one single household? Maybe it's because, this is also in the headlines, that Harris announces plans to help 80% of Africa gain access to the internet, up from 40% now. Talk about a policy failure. Talk about not delivering results to the American people. Spending $42 billion, yet not having one household connected to the internet. Mr. Carr, is that actually true? Not one home got internet? That's correct. In Georgia alone, there's about 257,000 homes and businesses that lack internet today. So that's potentially millions of people that were supposed to be connected through this program. 42 billion was enough money to actually end the digital divide in this country with competent implementation. Unfortunately, we have not cleared that hurdle. We have stories out right now that describe the implementation as chaotic, dysfunction, delays, no guidance, finger pointing, messy, delayed rollout. That's just not getting the job done. That's right, Mr. Carr. And many of those homes and businesses are actually in my district and they're outraged. You know, we're over $35 trillion in debt. Uh, Biden-Harris administration has been in charge for nearly four years, but not one home and business has gotten internet. It's outrageous. Um, th this is so uh, concerning to me. How can the woman Kamala Harris, that is telling the country right now she wants to be President of the United States, actually asked for this job if she has not been able to deliver what the President assigned her to do, which was to take that $42 billion and provide internet to the American people. I, ha I find that hard to believe because I own a construction company, and when we get hired to do a job, guess what, we deliver it. Let me ask you a question, under the Trump administration, uh, in 2020, the FCC awarded Starlink $885 million to serve 642,925 homes and businesses that lacked internet. What happened to that program? Well, last year, uh, after President Biden went to the White House podium and said that Elon Musk is worth being looked into, the FCC abruptly reversed course and yanked back that award. And now in other programs, the ones that are, are actually connecting people under this administration, we're spending dollars on the penalties. Senator Cruz recently had a report showing that in some cases we're spending $100,000 per home for broadband, when with that Starlink deal, it was $1,300. I don't think there's any way to explain the FCC's decision um, other than to go back to Joe Biden giving the green light to agencies to go after him. So what has happened in the process of $42 billion being allocated for Americans to get internet? Why has that not been able, why, why can't Kamala Harris deliver those results? Look, after 1,039 days and no Americans being connected, what they've been doing so far is advancing a wish list of progressive policy goals. They've been pushing for DEI requirements, climate change agenda, preferences for government-run networks, rather than just focusing on getting people connected.
You know, thank you very much, Mr. Carr. That's exactly what the American people are so fed up with, is so-called policies that actually never deliver results for the American people. I yield, Mr. Chairman.